rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. Hello everybody, welcome back. So hopefully as you can see, we're gonna be working on a Singer 127. This is a full-size machine, and the difference primarily to me between a 27 and a 127 is that the bobbin winder is placed up here on top to engage with the wheel instead of down here where it engages with a treadle. Um, belt and also this has a place over here where I can mount either a hand crank or a motor whereas a lot of the 27s don't. So as you can see she does turn over but she is quite a mess. This is a machine that I am going to be putting up for sale and uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to motorize her or hand crank her so Maybe if someone buys her before I get her finished, we can customize that. But anyway, I'm going to get started disassembling her as I usually do. So let me go ahead and tip her over. We're going to work down here on the bottom end first. And see, this is a mess under here. I'm actually going to flip her over and pull the bobbin shuttle out and everything first. There's a little spider crawling across there. Goodbye, spider. Um, but one of the things I really like about these machines is, first of all, they sew fabulously for a straight stitch machine. But also, you can get brand new bobbins, uh, brand new bobbin cases, the shuttles and everything. You can buy those brand new pretty easily. So there's no problem getting supplies for them. They use a standard modern needle, so all of that is good. So let's see how her slide plates if they're gonna come open easily or not. And it looks like the front one is, so that's great. I'm gonna move the shuttle over, push the button, pull it out. There is a bobbin in here. So this is gonna need to get cleaned out, obviously. Uh, let's see if the back plate comes off. Ooh, the back plate comes off pretty easily too. So that's really good. I'm just gonna put all of the plates including this one in a separate baggie. And uh, as I usually do, keeping all of the components separate in a little tub here so that after I have her disassembled, I can go through one little baggie and component at a time and clean up the parts really well. Just about to take that little front plate off and that screw is not budging. I'm using my little Chapman bits and everything, but at the same time, I don't want to strip it so I'm going to go ahead, just put a little bit of penetrating oil on there, hope it works its way through, and put these little baggie of plates in my tin, and when I'm done with the underneath, hopefully that'll come loose then. So back down here. I think I'm going to start trying to work off this screw. Um, let's see if I can angle this. This is the shaft that's connected to the pivot here that pushes the shuttle back and forth, okay? So I'm going to try to pull this off first. I've just got a big bit. Well, oh, it's loose already, so there's that going for me. Um, let me grab one of my magnetic dishes here to put things in. So this is the little flathead screw. Let's see. If that's going to want to come out, there is a little screw over here on the side that can open that if it's not going to. I'm going to see if I can get this screw off over here. Maybe not, maybe not. Let me 
do a couple things here to try to get a little more leverage going on. Okay, let's see here. There it goes. Sometimes you just need to be able to push and twist and everything at the same time. So, I can pull this little screw off. Should have kept using the screwdriver. All right, so this one has a shoulder on it, you know, very dirty, but that's how it goes. Let's see if I can pull this off. Looks like I need to loosen up this little screw on the side here. Okay, well I just started turning it and it's ready to pop off. So there you go. This is going to go in a baggie by itself. Okay, I'm going to get ready to work in here. And this little point right there is the bottom of that screw that I was having trouble with up on the top. So I'm just putting some penetrating oil on the back side of it. And you know what? Um, yeah. Because I am going to need to get the feed dogs off of here before I can lift this up. But I'm just going to go ahead and loosen up this screw on the side here, which is attaching them. And uh, see if just loosening that up is going to be enough that I can get this bar free. Okay. So this screw here is what's holding on the feed dogs. Once I take this plate off up there, I'll lift them out from the top, but they are not connected to this bar here right now. It's very, very linty in there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this bar off. There's a pivot point up here with a 9 16th nut and one over here. So what I need to do is get a larger screwdriver bit um, I think that will work. And a 9 16 inch wrench. Okay, so putting it down here, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Let's see if I can crack this nut, which was not that difficult. Okay, you know what? got myself a ratchet wrench at Harbor Freight, so I'm just going to use that. How cool is that? Okay, so my nut is off. There's still a screw in there, so I can put my screwdriver in now and release it. You can see, you'll see these this pivot point screw is really, really filthy. Okay, so that is what it looks like. You know, it's terribly filthy, but that's okay. We can clean it up. I mean, go ahead and take that same one off of this side. So now that those are off, you can see that this shaft is moving pretty easily. Um, I'm just going to tap that part out there. Okay, so now down here at this end, right down here, the last thing I need to do to remove it is there is a little nut here and a flathead screw on this side that I need to release, and then that's going to let this bar come free. Alrighty, so this is a little 3 8 inch nut. That came off pretty easily, and so... Now, oy, this screw is, holy cow, it's nasty. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of penetrating oil on that and let it think about itself for a minute, and I'll come right back to it. Okay, I was able to wiggle the shaft off. The screw is still in here, but since I got the shaft off, I can just tap it with the nylon side here. Hopefully, sheesh, that's not even going to do it. It's like glued in. All right, I'm going to pour some of that penetrating oil in this side too. Okay, so I got that wiggled free, and um, while I was just jostling things around, the feed dog slipped through, so I've got that. I'm going to put that away. Oops, just dropped it. I'll pick it up. Put that away with its little nut and its own. I'm going to go ahead and try to remove the little 
shuttle carrier part here. Okay, so here's the little screw. Here's this nasty little part here. Um, sometimes I have a terrible time getting these out and I don't know if I'm in the mood to fight it or not. It's, I got enough disassembled that I can clean this really well in place and just mask around it. So if after, you know, the first couple minutes of trying to take it off, I'm not getting her to budge at all, I might just leave it in here. I don't think that's gonna hurt anything. Okay, I am not too sure why this is giving me as much trouble as it is. I have heated it from underneath, you know, with my torch, added oil, still not budging. I'm going to leave it alone because this is going to go in my e-tank, my electrolysis tank, so maybe that will help, you know. But for right now, I'm just unscrewing and I'm going to be removing the tension assembly here. The little washer. Dirty, dirty. Dirty, dirty. And there's a little spring here. I need to undo this little screw right here. Okay, that was this what I was working on. So you can see here, so there's a screw that's in this little crescent shape there. That's what I just pulled out, which should release this. Uh, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put this nut back on for a second here to hold it together and untwist it. Okay, so there we go. This is part of the casting there, so that is the entire little tension mechanism, very dirty. Um, I will get that cleaned up. And go ahead and take off this little peephole plate up here. Oh my goodness, don't you give me trouble too. There we go. Take off this one and that back circular plate and put them away together. So that one and this one back here. Uh, Hang on a second, I may need to get a little plier to pull that. Yay, there it goes, okay. Well, we'll see how clean we can get it. I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful. Okay, so taking a look at this front plate here, go ahead and remove it. Screw down here. Let's see what she looks like. She looks as to be expected. I'm going to go ahead and pull off the little needle clamp down here below. Okay. Let me uh, loosen up this screw right here. That's the one that's holding the needle bar in. So just loosening that up. Let's see if I can move this needle bar. It's still stuck. Okay. I'm going to remove it all the way. Okay. So that is out. Um... Let me see if I can turn this needle bar at all. Nope, I cannot. I cannot turn it. Okay, she is stuck. All right, so there's probably a whole bunch of stuff really stuck in here. I'm just going to spray a bunch of penetrating oil in here. I've got to do a couple other things, let it sit for a few minutes, and I will be right back. While that is thinking about itself, I'm going to go ahead and pull off this thread guide down here and put it with that little needle clamp for safekeeping. Okay, while I'm waiting for the needle bar to think about itself, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove some of the stuff from this presser bar. So I'm gonna start by trying to loosen up this finial. Oh my gosh, 
gosh, that does not want to turn. Okay, well, second thought is I'm gonna go ahead and just take off the presser foot. Why not? Let's get that started. And take off the thread cutter, okay? I'm gonna loosen up this screw right here, which is holding that presser bar. It looks like that's pretty well stuck to, oops, nope, it came free, it came free, that's great. Okay, I think I may be able to pull this up and out the top, nope, nope. So stiff, so stiff. All right, so there's the presser. I'm doing this backwards, basically. And my little washer just fell in there. Don't do it this way. Take your finial out first. Oh, just this finial is so stuck. Oh good, it's turning now, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to use pliers the entire way to unscrew this, but there is a washer in there I dropped. I need to get it pulled out and put with my spring. Okay, that's the little screw. That goes on top of the spring up here, okay? So I don't wanna lose that. So now I can put all of my presser bar stuff in a baggie together. All right, so now that the presser bar is out of the way, I'm gonna pull this screw over here, which is, the one that's kind of like holding this clamp closed. So hopefully now with that released, I'll be able to move this bar. Will I? I have a plastic punch here that should not hurt anything. Come on, come free. Hey, you can see it's starting to move. It's very starting to move. Once I can get this free, then I can pull that needle bar out. So it might take me a minute. Let me just keep on tapping. This did not want to come free. I'm not sure was holding it but she's out now so there you go all right so this piece here is also going to be coming out as part of it and uh, there should be a bearing on here yeah okay so this bearing comes off which is over this little post here and that's also going to be part of it to get cleaned so let me get all of this put away okay I'm going to remove the little screw right here which is for the lifter presser foot lifter lever if i can it's very oily in there and the screw is loose it's just slipping around hang on a sec okay so there it is you know gonna be clean and this little Y-shaped piece in there, that's gonna come out. So that is the little piece that when the lifter lever gets pushed, it pushes, there's a spring here, it pushes over this way and releases the tension, okay? So I'm gonna remove that spring really quick so I don't lose it. Um, oh, this is a pin. This is a pin. I am not a fan of punching out pins I don't need to. Hmm, I might leave it in there. I just might. This is gonna get cleaned up entirely while it's in my e-tank. And so I took the spring off, you know, I'll keep that for safekeeping, but I think I'm gonna leave that in. I'm just not a big fan of punching out pins that I don't need to. So let me go ahead and turn it over here and take out this big old flat screw to pull out this thread lifter. Okay. Alrighty, yay. She is coming loose pretty easily. Big old flat screw. And then I just need to wiggle this piece out. Okay, this little bearing here, is that gonna come off? No, it's not going to come off, that's good. Okay, that'll stay put. That's what travels inside this little groove here. 
in the end of the main shaft there's this little cog with a groove in it this travels up and down in there and that's what lifts up the lifter lever go ahead and take off the wheel um, I need a smaller bit hang on <clears throat> I love my, my bits. The other day I had to put in a huge order to Chapman bits because uh, I ran out of some sizes. And, uh, you know, when you order like 50 bits at a time. And they sent me a couple extra to try out, which are shapes that I don't normally use. But thank you very much anyway. I really appreciate that. Okay. So here is that little screw. It's a specialty shaped one. If you ever find a screw with this little bitty nub on the end, it's probably for one of these wheels. Okay, so pulling this off, the typical three-pronged washer, and will this come off? Come on. Almost there. Hang on. Okay, so the wheel came off, you know, Kind of dirty, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off. Look at that, look how bad this tire is. Oh my gosh, it's rock hard. <laughs> this is this bob and winder's in pretty sad shape, it's very rusty. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take off from the top here this belt guard because the uh, bob and winder assembly and everything is attached to that. Okay, whoopsie. All right, so there's that. The um, belt guard, the bobbin winder, it's all going to be getting painted. So I am going to be, you know, separating the bobbin winder from the belt guard and pulling all of this off. But um, I'm going to actually put this whole thing into a baggie for right now so I don't lose any of those parts and do that a little bit later once I have this all settled right here. And there's really only one more thing I'm going to do. Um, the stitch length. I need to get this out here. So let's see what we look like. This screw right here I need to get loosened up. Let me get a great big. It's too big. All right, that's good. Let me see if I can unloosen this. Oh, well that's loose to start with. Okay, there should be a washer here and I see it. It's coming up out of the crud here. It's a little three pronged, like lock washer kind of thing. That's important, I can't lose that. Come on. Okay, so there's that little three-pronged lock washer in this nut. Now, hopefully, I can get the stitch length prong out of here. There is a fork back in here, and I'm going to grab the bottom of it and just try to wiggle it out. If you can see in there, while well, I'm unscrewing and wiggling and everything that's very, very filthy in there. All right, that block came off, so the fork should be coming out soon. Let me just shake that block out. Okay, so this is the last thing I'm gonna be doing here, which is taking this apart. Got my little activity tray from Dollar Tree here, you know comes in handy. Get my bit changed out and the first thing I'm going to do is separate it from the belt guard if it wants to. Oh my gosh, that's... Nope, it does not want to. So, the first thing I'm going to do is spray it down. 
with penetrating oil and let it rest. She's saturated. We're going to try it again. There is a nut on the back of this screw, and I am just going to grab it with my pliers and turn it. Okay, so there's that nut. Let's see if I can unscrew this now. All right. It's coming. You can see it's coming. This is a messy, messy business, but it has to be done. Okay, so this washer is going so that you see how it's curved out that way? Okay, it sets against the casting so it's curving away from the casting. So I'm going to put that over here, push this screw out, that all goes together. I'm going to go ahead and set these together here so that they don't get lost. It's a lot harder to lose them when they're screwed together. This I'm going to put over with the belt, I mean with the, the wheel over here because that needs to get stripped and painted. Okay, looking pretty good. This here and its little threaded part stays on. This, that spring is working good, that's going to stay on. This part is what's coming off. So let me go ahead and loosen up this screw right here. If I can. Let me get a different bit again. Okay. Having the little ratchet out on the side for leverage is a fabulous thing, let me tell you. All right, so this, this arm, the little spring that's attached to it, those all need to get cleaned. On the back here, there's another little nut. I'm going to get that loosened up first. Come on. There it goes. Okay, once that nut is loosened, then I should be able to get the screw off from the front. Right here. Take off this main center screw. Come on. It's coming. It's coming. <sighs> Don't know what is holding it up, but it's coming. I should be able to just pound it out, and I think I untwisted it enough that that will now. This is going to get separated also. Smaller bit again here to take off the little heart shaped cam. Mm -mm -mm. Well, we're going to let that sit in penetrating oil. This part here, I'm going to put over with. This stuff because that also is going to get stripped out. Let me put all of this into its own little baggie here. I'm going to throw um, a couple little magnets in there with it. Sometimes in baggies when I have a lot of tiny pieces that want to get lost, I found that if I throw a couple little magnets in there with it, they're more inclined not to. You know? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the machine all prepped up and ready to go in my electrolysis tank for stripping and cleaning. Okay, so she is in there and she has started cooking. See all the little bubbles coming off? They're doing their job. So she's going to be in there for a couple days. This is going to be it for this video. Next time we'll get her cleaned up after stripping and get her painted. Thanks for watching.